So, RW out here on the porch, and uh, because of this ridiculous snowfall we had, everything pretty much shut down from Valentine's Day until now. It's Tuesday now. Kids are finally back at school. Mail is finally being delivered again, and I can think of no better knife to unbox this with than this lovely Diggs Sadashi. The Diggs Sadashi is doing the job. Probably touch that edge up a little bit. It still works. Yeah, they really did a real super nice job on uh, the packaging of this. We don't need all that. Just don't need it. I want to show you guys what's in here because uh, I haven't seen it except in a photograph, and I want to show it to you and Diggs and me and everybody all at the same time. Come on, baby. Give it up. Give it up. The heck. I have to resort to tearing this thing open with my teeth. Wow, they really went to a great deal of trouble, as you can see. Lots and lots of cardboard protecting this. They are now fooling around. There you go. A chunk. Oh yeah, this is what I was, I was mentioning to uh, to Diggs about this bloodwood. How it has short, brittle fibers. See, this is where it took a corner hit during transit. Chipped it right off of there. Nice. Ends are dipped in wax. This is to prevent the uptake of moisture while it's being stored. Okay. It suffered some damage in travel, as you can see. Took an in shot, broke off, uh, broke off little chips of wood. Really unfortunate. You can notice that this grain moves this way. So when the planer blade was coming into this, it's lifting it, tearing it out, just the same way that any impact would tear it out because it's got short fibers. Here's another one here, right? But these go the other way. Flip this over. Ha! Ah, it's that one that gets lifted, and the other one. See, so this this wood goes this way, and then it goes this way, right next to itself. It has a lot of internal pressures. It's a tropical species. It's a lot of internal pressures, and as it's being cured and 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 everything, it it, it goes nuts. It's got short fibers, so it doesn't hold together very well. When it's under pressure, it's going to break. Bam, 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 bam. So, if I tilt this into the sunlight, you will really be able to see. I hope. I'm going to wiggle it back and forth in case the camera isn't the same angle as my eyeball. But if you would run your hand over it, you'd feel one there, 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 and there. Like little cracks there. Look at the other side. If you would run your hand over it, you would feel a big, long crack that runs all the way like this. If I turn it on edge, you can see it. crack runs from about there to there. And there's another one that goes off there, kind of like a Y. And here's a kind of a Y crack with one in the crack coming out of the middle of it. Almost like hot rod flames. So you got a crack here, 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 here. And a crack here. And here. There might be a couple more that my eye is not picking up. And this side has been run through the saw. So, this wood's going to present some challenges for me as I mill it into 040 strips that have been planed on both sides. As you can imagine, I'm down in the shop because there's the shop cat. Okay, after surfacing this down, here, let's put the calipers on it. Have a look see. What we got going on here? One handed caliper operation. Okay, we're down to 2.11, round in there, end to end. Okay. This is after I've run it through the planer to clean it up a little bit, make it look a little more presentable, and make it pass through the bandsaw a little easier. Let's give it a little more. What am I doing there? There we go. 
and we've got 3.963 on the width end end. Okay, so it's well within what my man wants, my man Diggs wants. This is the little setup I got going on over here. I'm using my table saw fence clamped to the bandsaw to give me a nice high perpendicular surface. Use my digital calipers to set this up so that I'm getting a point four five cut. And I'll, once I run that through the planer, that'll be down to round point four zero, oh, which is what I'd like to hand the man. Nothing to it really. Just uh, as long as the blade's nice and sharp, which it is, and the machine's up to spec, which I hope it is. I could turn on the dust collector and start running the stock. Started to release a lot of tension and pretty much went crazy. So, did I pull it off? Have to get the, uh, the digitals out. Let's see what I got out of it. Get the reading. I got a zero four five. Let's see, check the other end, and we'll check the middle. Okay. Four four three. Okay, that's well within reason. Wow, what a beast! Especially right in the middle. Really started fighting me. Okay, just out of curiosity, see what I got left. I'm gonna have to plane this before I run it again. I've got point one six three four. So certainly enough to get three more. 0.45 pieces out with 0.05 waste. That's why I use the bandsaw. It's the least amount of waste possible. But, as you can see, if you were watching that whole thing, which is probably really boring, <laughs> it opened up as it came out. That's what it does. It likes to do that. Alright, let's run this one through the planer and uh, clean up the side so I can run it again. And I'll make another strip. But I'm going to save you guys a TDM. I'll just show you the finished product. Oh, yeah. Let's see what's collected in here from the planer. But that's awesome, too. Oh, yeah. Very, very red. Very nice. I'm going to show you some glorious looking material here, man. This is point zero. I mean, this is 0 0.40 on the Nabowitz. Uh, I'm hoping this camera does this justice. Just amazing material. Get it over here where it's completely in the light. Hmm, pretty much anyway, huh? And uh, it's in pairs. There's the chipped outside edge there. This is some blood wood here, but you can see after it's oxidized, it's turned kind of a pale color. Look at how rich red that is. That is really outstanding. Let me show you the other side. Okay. And I'm going to put them matching faces together, like how they were sliced. So, if you were to reverse it around, you would see two matching patterns. Which I think came out real nice. 
Uh, not as, my, my planer has really sharp blades, so I was able to reduce tear out. As you can see, just a minimal amount of tear out. That's something you can deal with after you finish sanding and everything. Really nice looking material. have it. Uh, and the way they are, they, they're paired up. I've got them with little witness marks, see my little zigzag mark there, and then I've got three stripes right there. So these are two pairs. This is a pair. This is a pair. And so now, I have to take these beautiful things and I have to cut them up. Man, can you believe it? <laughs> I just want to look at them a little bit longer. How about you, Venus? You just want some tuna, you don't care. Alright, there it is, my friend. A little package of joy for you, Diggs. Uh, this is pretty much going to be bulletproof inside of a cardboard box. The package is just too big. Even if I were just to put the raw wood in here with no padding, the wood wouldn't have fit, my friend. So, no flat rate packing for you. Deluxe priority mail packing for you, sir. And I wanted to demonstrate that I've got a lot of edge protection. Okay? So, inside of a cardboard box, you will have no worries. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate the work, and uh, enjoy.